So we're going to take a quick look at uh, the ways to use the Drive app and other Google tools on the iPad. Working with a teacher the other day who was interested in adding footnotes to a Google Doc but was frustrated that it wasn't easy to do on the iPad. So let's take a look at that as an example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to launch my Drive app and we'll see that you get the folder view here in Drive and there's some good functionalities on this but they're um, limited sometimes in comparison to what you could do on a browser on a, a desktop. Um, take a look at, I've got my series of folders here. Uh, I can take a look at some of the files that I've been working on and I can edit those files. But if I want to use the research tool, or at least this is the way I figured it out, if I want to use the research tool and add footnotes on, it, on my iPad, instead of being in this um, app, let me go ahead and I'm going to launch in Safari. Google Drive. So the way I did that was I typed in drive.google.com and you'll see I'm seeing something that looks a little bit more like what I would normally see on uh, on using a computer or a website. Um, what I'm doing is I'm scrolling down to the very bottom there because I want you to see this. See at the very bottom here where it says the mobile version? View in that. Actually, I want to view not in the mobile version, but I want to view in the desktop version. So I clicked on desktop and then I have to say yes, I want to continue to the desktop version. And I'll show you why that is. This looks a lot more to me like what I would see, again, viewing it on a computer. And when I go ahead to create a new doc, I have options to be able to use tools that I didn't have available to me before. So click on that document and I'll get a brand new one. Again, it kind of prompts me it's still back in the mobile version, but I do want to go out to the desktop version, so I have to click that again. That's kind of a pain to keep doing like that. But here I have my new document. And let's just imagine that I'm working with some students and we're, um, we're doing some research on, let's say, Lewis and Clark. Couldn't dismiss that. OK, up here in Tools, and drop down, I've got a second um, option here called research. Now you notice that when I clicked on research, what happened was a box opened up on the right hand side here. And it's a search box for me and I can go on out and I can do any kind of research that I want embedded right here on this page, which is a nice thing to not have to keep moving back and forth between two, um, two windows to be able to do research like that. There are a couple of other things that are great about this. So remember I told you that I had that teacher who um, was interested in footnotes, right? Well, if a student comes on in here and does some research and decides that he or she likes this National Geographic, notice when I click on that, I get a thumb um, print view to see if it's something that I'd like to launch out and, and do some more work with. But I also have these little options here that preview, insert link, and cite. If I just click on insert link, notice where my cursor is on the dock. The link itself just goes live right in there. And then let's also say, let's take the opportunity to cite this page. And I haven't gone and taken a look at it, but let's just imagine I wanted to do that. And when I click on that cite button, notice what happened. The, um, the footnote was automatically added right in here. There's a little number one there. It's a wonderful option here. And I noticed that I also just dropped down some more opportunities. I can go ahead and I can filter whatever I'm going to go ahead and put in here. And I can also change whether I want it to be MLA, APA, or Chicago-style citations. The filtering of the usage is also a really wonderful thing because I might want to be looking for some images, and I want to show students that I can't just take any image on, um, on Google, but I'm going to need to cite these images as well. So it defaults to not filtered by a license, but I'm going to ask students to um, search for images for any of their research searching and make sure that those images that they found um, are available to be able to use to them. So right now I'm searching for web results for my Lewis and Clark search, but if I drop down that little G, notice that instead of everything I can just search for images or a number of other things, but I can limit my search like that.